The Detroit Lions are considered slight underdogs for their Week 11 matchup against the Carolina Panthers. It's worth noting this line should be one of the week's most fluid, with both starting quarterbacks working through injuries and Christian McCaffrey still not practicing. Head coach Matt Rule told on Monday he was, hopeful, quarterback Teddy Bridgewater would be able to participate in practice to some extent Wednesday. Bridgewater was at practice Wednesday after leaving Sunday's loss to the Tampa Bay Buccaneers with a right knee injury, per Observer reporting on Wednesday. He wore a red jersey and worked to the side with a trainer during the portion of practice open to the media. Rule seemed hopeful Bridgewater could play Sunday when speaking to the Detroit media Wednesday afternoon. He called Bridgewater the heart and soul of the Carolina offense. Here is injury report. Detroit Lions quarterback Matthew Stafford was noncommittal with reporters about playing Sunday versus the Panthers after injuring his thumb in Week 10, adding that he hopes to practice later this week. Just taking it day to day, Stafford said. Trying to figure out if I can get through it. See if I can go out there and play. Wide receiver Kenny Galladay hip returned to practice Wednesday, but was not joined by receivers Marvin Jones knee and Danny Amendola hip. Tight end TJ Hawkinson toe was limited. Detroit Lions quarterback Matthew Stafford was noncommittal Wednesday about whether he would be available to play Sunday against Carolina Panthers with his injured right thumb. Stafford attended practice but was a spectator for the portion open to the media, standing to the side while Chase Daniel and David Blau took reps in his place. He had what appeared to be a brace or supportive wrap over the thumb, which he largely kept inside his hand warmer during a brisk day in Michigan. After Stafford said Monday on Fox 2 Detroit that, I like my chances to play against the Panthers, he walked it back some Wednesday after not practicing. I'm just going to take it day by day, see how it heals, Stafford said. How it feels throughout the week and go from there. Stafford he hopes he can practice at some point during the week. Two weeks ago, because of close contact exposure to someone who tested positive for COVID-19, he did not practice at all throughout the week and played Sunday. As for why he didn't practice Wednesday, some of that could be on his coach, Matt Patricia. We're just trying to be smart with it, Patricia said. Obviously, I think we all know how tough Matthew Stafford is, and he's going to do everything possible. And for the most part, it's probably me just trying to slow it down through the course of the week. Sometimes he gets out there and gets competitive and likes to do what he knows that he can do. From that standpoint, we'll take it day by day. This, of course, could affect his ability to throw the ball. Obviously gripping and throwing the ball is a little bit different when any of your fingers hurt or are injured, Stafford said. He had little issue throwing against Washington, completing 24 of 33 passes for 276 yards, three touchdowns and no interceptions after injuring the thumb on a sack in the first quarter. X-rays on the thumb came back negative, Stafford said Monday, but he would not confirm a NFL Network report stating there was ligament damage. Stafford said that previous hand injuries he had played through, including a middle finger injury in 2016 that saw the Lions lose their final three regular season games and a playoff loss to Seattle, are different from this one in determining whether he would play. Some of those in the past have been pain tolerance, and others have been like function as well, you know, Stafford said. So it's all in the equation, that's part of it. Stafford said he wasn't sure yet where the thumb injury would classify. Trying to figure out if I can get through it and figure out if I can get out there throughout the week in practice, Stafford said. Hopefully some at some point, and then see if I can go out there and play. The Lions didn't just come up short in their game against the Indianapolis Colts, they also lost one of their best players on offense. Wide receiver Kenny Galladay left the game with a hip injury and did not end up returning in the second half. Galladay saw four targets in the first half but failed to record a catch. Sunday marked the first time he was unable to make a catch in a game that he was active in his career. NFL Network's Ian Rapoport reported that Kenny Galladay's injury would cause him to miss Week 9, and the team had labeled the star 27-year-old WR as, week to week, which put Week 10 in jeopardy. There was also talk of Galladay landing on the short-term IR, which would take him out of the game for a minimum of three weeks. The team has been very quiet on Galladay's status other than listing him as out, which the team did on Friday. The fact that the team listed him as out two days before the game started makes you wonder how close Kenny Galladay even is from a full recovery from his injury. 
Galladay missed the first two weeks of the season with a hamstring injury and has 20 catches on 32 targets for 338 yards and two touchdowns in five games. On a points-per-game basis, Galladay's 13.2 is respectable. But after being selected as the WR8-25 ADP, his WR72 standing on the season has been one of the most disappointing picks of the 2020 fantasy season. Marvin Jones had a fantastic day on Sunday against a stout Washington defense, leading his team in all receiving categories and securing a touchdown for the third week in a row. Outside of DeAndre Swift's massive day, Jones was the star of the show. Jones finished the day with eight receptions on 10 targets for 96 yards and a touchdown. What makes this impressive is knowing how good the Washington defense has been. Dare I say elite? They came into Week 10 as one of just two teams in the NFL who've held receivers to fewer than 1,100 yards this year, Rams were the other as they've allowed only 132.0 yards per game to the position. They've also allowed just three touchdowns to wide receivers on the year, which was tied with the Bears for the fewest in the league. There had been only three top 30 wide receivers against them through eight games, and those receivers were Amari Cooper, DeAndre Hopkins, and Robert Woods. In the past three weeks, do you know where Marvin Jones is in fantasy ranks? He is WR8 between weeks 8 and 10. He has caught 14 of his 21 targets for 178 yards and 4 touchdowns during this stretch while averaging 18.6 PPR points per game. It is worth mentioning that part of his Week 10 blow-up was aided in the absence of TJ Hawkinson. However, the fact that he has done this over multiple games gives me confidence in Jones heading into next week. If Kenny Galladay is going to miss more time with his injury, you can fire Marvin Jones up as a low-end WR2, high-floor WR3 against the Carolina Panthers next week. The Detroit Lions won on a game-winning field goal from kicker Matt Prater against the Washington football team to put them back in the playoff hunt. In their next matchup, they'll take on another below .500 team in the Carolina Panthers that they'll look to get a win against. Here, you'll find information about the matchup history, what happened in their last matchup, what to watch for, what the Lions need to do to win and a prediction for the game. The Lions and Panthers have faced each other nine total times. Carolina has the advantage with a 6-3 record. The last time the Lions and Panthers saw each other was on November 18, 2018. The game took place in Detroit at Ford Field with the Lions taking the win by a mere point, 20-19. Quarterback Matthew Stafford threw for 220 yards and a touchdown with 23 completions on 37 attempts. Running back Carrion Johnson rushed for 87 yards on 15 carries along with a touchdown. Wide receiver Kenny Galladay caught 8 passes for 113 yards as well as a touchdown. On defense, the Lions combined for 3 sacks coming from linebackers Jared Davis and Devin Kennard and defensive end Ezekiel Ansa. Prater made two field goals this game with one of them being 54 yards. For the Panthers, quarterback Cam Newton threw for 357 yards with three touchdowns and an interception. While the Lions are known for a poor run-stopping defense, they changed those fortunes this game as star running back Christian McCaffrey rushed for only 53 yards on 13 tries. Wide receiver DJ Moore caught seven passes for 157 yards and a touchdown. Other touchdowns were caught by wide receiver Curtis Samuel and tight end Greg Olson. Linebacker Luke Quetchley recorded 11 tackles with seven of them being solo. Kicker Graham Gano missed a field goal which ended up being a difference maker in this game. Punter Michael Pilardi made five punts averaging 44.4 yards a kick. As the Panthers are expected to be without two of their key starters in McCaffrey and quarterback Teddy Bridgewater, the Lions need to take on the opportunity to pounce on a weakened defense. With no McCaffrey and probably no Bridgewater, the Lions get a big advantage as it weakens the Panthers' offense.